guys, welcome to another Jarrow Vikings Insane Angling Adventure. Today, to be honest, I wasn't going to make a video. Uh, I was just going to come out, take it easy and fish on the beach, hopefully for a few flounders, not bass. But luckily, my friend Steve brought his GoPro because uh, it's turned into a decent session. I've had about three or four bass already and uh, a few uh, flounders. So we're on Drew Ridge Bay at the moment near Cresswell, which is in Northumberland. I'm using ragworm for bait. I'm using uh, two hook flammers. Uh, two hook flapper rigs, the hooks on them are size 2 O's and the main line is 60 pound and the snood line is 25 pound and the full length of this rig is probably 3 foot and the snood length is probably about 12 inches and um, yeah seems to be working be work quite well see, if you can look at the sea it's quite heavy today it's not something I would normally fish and do for bass a bit less rough than where it is at the moment so I've had to put a 7 ounce weight on my bass rod and I'm casting out around about 50 to 60 yards into a gully which I know is out there because I walked the beach about a week ago uh, the gully is probably only about 20 yards wide and about 5 foot deep but that's where the fish are and it's quite unusual to be catching so many in the daylight so we're going to stop and fish in the darkness and hopefully we'll catch a few better bass and uh, we'll give it a go anyway <laughs> we've got a lot of dog walkers at the moment on the beach ends what I've got left until there uh, I think we can get out on that sandbank so I think at the moment there might just be flounders and a odd small bass in that small in the little gully so I'll keep the good stuff till later when it starts to get a little bit dark and dusky so I got about three or four inches of there Scraggy ragworm on there in a minute. Change my grip there to a lighter one, four ounce. And all I'm going to do is going to walk out about, cast about 30 yards in the middle of this hole, cast it just before the big abrators. five or six feet deep out there which is deep enough for bass to float down as easily and later on we should go up the ground to the side bank which is a bit further out there Right, the beauty of that one, 
I reckon that's probably the best one I've ever caught off the northeast. Good three pounder, I reckon. Amazing. Normally I'd put them back, but I'm going to keep this one for me tea. <laughs> well, it's a bass, I'm not sure, but <laughs> we rod took off there, went up in the air again. So uh, I'm pretty sure it's a bass, but maybe it's not as big as the last one. Or well, there could be a flounder along with it as well. I thought I was getting a few small flatty bikes before.
nice taste and that one's not quite big enough to keep something if we're back to back. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a flounder or it's swimming towards us. Steve's into a bass, definitely. It's a shame I didn't have the camera. Just feels like a flat to me, but. Just caught a bass. Uh, what we've done is we've changed rigs. We've put the two hook flapper rig on with a bit of lug worm on, and literally, been in five minutes, there's a bass. Not a huge one, but a little, a, a little schoolie. But a lot of the fish what we we'll catch on the Northumberland coast are small schoolies, and uh, sometimes often quite like hens' teeth to catch. There's not that many of them about. Uh, well, yeah, we've done quite well today. Really enjoyed it. It's away. It's away. Put back. Not big enough to keep that one. Anyway, now it's getting a bit shallow out here now, so I don't think I need the big seven ounce weight on anymore. So I think I'll put a three or four ounce scrimp head on. Just cast it short, kind of fished into a shallow gully here. Probably about five or six foot feet deep at the moment. Fishing before the last breaker. Where well, normally I would like to be casting over the breaker, but this is where the fish seem to be in this uh, shallow point. So if the tide goes out a bit more, we we'll, should hopefully get onto a sandbank a bit further out. We'll get over them furthest waves and hopefully there's still some fish out there. We've definitely got another bass on here. Literally five minutes after I was explaining what I was doing, the rod keeled over. And it's going mental. Not a bad size for the northeast coast. Not quite big enough to keep though. I have kept one a day which was a nice size for the table. Well that must be about how many drinks Steve? About six or seven on that now? Seven, thirty seven. Seven. So, amazing when you see the dorsal fins sticking up like that. Yeah, scales like that. Even though this one wasn't huge, still a pleasure to catch. We'll get them straight back and watch them swim away. There he is. to get bigger. Well it's went quiet for a little bit uh, but we've had about seven bass so far and about four or five flounders. Uh, tides on its way out it's getting shallower and shallower now in this gully. I still hold out a bit hope that we'll make another fish before, before it gets dark but uh, as soon as it gets dark we've got high hopes of a few more bass, definitely flounders. So we'll see how we'll get on anyway. There 
Yeah, there's a small flow now at that hole. Uh, I've just been out there to check. It's probably about three or four foot deep now, so it's shallow, shallow enough all the time. But there's still large fish in it, and I still hope and pray for a few more bass. Let's just walk across that gully. It's about knee high, slightly deeper than knee. And, uh, on the big sandbar, and the tide's going out, so it's perfectly safe. And he's going to chuck over the into slightly deeper water. Just letting the line out, come back to the, the main beach. Gonna have loads of line to do this, but he's uh, pretty well loaded up on his reel, so he's well equipped for it. As you can see, he's just literally just above his knees, a little channel, which is where we'll get the bass earlier. Look, Uncle, deep out there, Dave. Still up about there. Uh, <laughs> look pretty safe. Uh, but uh, it gets deeper just towards the end, just before it rises back up. Uh, well, hope for another bus. Uh, I would say it's still deep enough for fish, really. Uh, oh, it's a bite. If hadn't have done it five times off the trot, I might have thought it was a wheel. Well, they're a bit further out now, the fish. They're probably about 120 yards out over the gully and just behind the, the first big breaker. Just had a cracking bite there. It did come back like but didn't probably grab a hold of it. Oh, we'll pour it back down and we'll see what happens. So we've moved on to the sandbank now, we're a bit further out and uh, getting a few small bites, just a tiny little corny. So the bass start up here again. Yeah, uh, nothing will happen. Steve's just caught a fish there, I'm hoping it's going to be another bass. But what we've got, what we've got there, oh it's a corny. 
It's not, cool, a, bad, yeah. it's not cool. a bad size quality though. Yeah. So I think we'll give it about another 10 more minutes and then we'll call it a day. Seems the coolies are coming on. It's all dried out. Uh, gonna make this for last chuck. We've had a little coli, uh, but no bass, uh, no more flounders. So I think we've had a great day in anyway. I hope you've enjoyed the video and um, tight lines to everybody. So we'll have, like I say, we'll give it another 10 minutes, and if we don't catch any more bass, that's it. We'll be up. Yeah. So here's the bass I, I caught uh, yesterday. I'll have it for me dinner today. What I've done is I've just took the head off and the tail and uh, descaled it and I've took all the, the spiky fins off. So I'm going to make it a bit spicy, I think, this one. I've got some uh, spring onions, we'll stick them in. Spring onions. I'm going to kind of make it a bit Chinesey. We'll chuck a few just around. I'm no cook mind. No Gordon Ramsay. We'll just chuck them all on. Uh, <clears throat> I've got me boiled potatoes going there, which I'm going to have with it. So I've got a bit of Chinese stale spice. Bash that on. Bit of chilli powder. Bit of salt, it's looking better already. Soya sauce. I'll go a bit soya sauce as well, why not? Get that on. A good drizzle there. And last of all, Put a bit of olive oil on. Actually, it won't be last because I'm going to put a bit of coriander as well with it. I'm going to pour a good dollop of olive oil on there and get it cooking nicely. Just going to put the GoPro down for a second while well, I chop there some coriander. Put the coriander on. I don't like a bit of coriander. I know it's more of an Indian spice, but We'll see how it goes. Shall be nice. Oh, I've got a bit of coriander on. Got a chilli on. Looking lovely. Yeah, so there we go. <sighs> nice spicy bass billet on the bone. What I'm going to do now is just wrap that up in tin foil and I've got the oven ready. Put on a baking tray and leave it for about a half an hour and we'll see how it goes. We'll get back to it. Yeah so there we go. <coughs> Chinese sea bass with a few peas and uh, boiled potatoes with a nice spicy sauce on them. So I'm really looking forward to this. Crack on eh? So anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this video and if you did, please leave a comment and tell your friends about Jarrow Bacon's in St. Anglin and get yourself out there fishing, have some fun.